John Walker Lind, an American convert to Islam who fought for the Taliban, joined Al Qaeda, met with Osama bin Laden, and has praised ISIS, has been released from prison. He'll now be living in Virginia. I'm sure everything will turn out fine because Virginia is for lovers. CNN reports. John Walker Lind, the so-called American Taliban, whose capture in Afghanistan riveted a country in the early days after the September 11th attacks, has been released from prison, authorities said. After serving 17 years of a 20-year sentence, Lind, the first U.S.-born detainee in the War on Terror, on Thursday walked out of a federal prison in Terre Haute, Indiana, the Bureau of Prisons confirmed and will join the small but growing group of Americans convicted of terror-related charges attempting to re-enter into society. Lind will live in Virginia, subject to the direction of his probation officer, his lawyer Bill Cummings tells CNN. But some are already calling for an investigation into his time in prison, where he is said in two U.S. government reports to have made pro-ISIS and other extremist statements. That could send him back into detention. Reports of Lin's maintained radicalization, detailed in two 2017 official counterterrorism assessments, are also driving questions about the efforts of the U.S. government to rehabilitate former sympathizers like him, who are expected to complete prison sentences in waves in the coming years. How is the U.S. government supposed to rehabilitate someone who converts to Islam, recognizes that Allah commands him to wage jihad, and then decides to obey Allah? Is the U.S. government going to tell him not to do that? Hey, Al-Qaeda terrorist, don't you realize that Islam is a religion of peace? But Allah orders me in the Quran to fight anyone who- Stop quoting the Quran! You're supposed to get your religious views from us, the U.S. government, not from Allah. That'll go over well. Raised in the suburbs north of San Francisco, Lind took an interest in Islam at a young age, converting to the religion at 16 and moving to the Middle East to learn Arabic after finishing high school. In 2000, according to documentation of his interrogations, Lind went to Pakistan and trained with a radical Islamic group there before moving to Afghanistan and joining the Taliban. Because he was not native to Afghanistan and did not speak the local languages, Lind told investigators that he joined the Arab group, or Al-Qaeda, studying maps and explosives, fighting on a front line, and at one point, meeting with Osama bin Laden. A budding young terrorist getting to meet Osama bin Laden is like a Star Trek fan getting to meet William Shatner at Comic-Con. There's actually some video footage of Lin's meeting with bin Laden. What? Hey, it's me in an 80s movie, right? <laughs> yeah. hey, he got it. He got it over there. The little guy got it. Who is that guy? I've never seen him around here before. How's it going, Chief? Good day to you, sir. When U.S. troops first encountered Lind in November 2001, just weeks after the September 11th attacks, he was bedraggled and injured. A CNN camera filmed as Lind, a daze cast over his dirty face, told American forces how he had wound up at a detention camp in northern Afghanistan and survived a Taliban uprising there that killed hundreds of prisoners and a CIA officer, Johnny Michael Spann. Lind admitted to participating in the revolt near Mazari Sharif, Afghanistan, but prosecutors did not say that he had a role in Span's death. The U.S. government doesn't know much about what Lind did when he was with the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. There's a similar problem with people who joined ISIS, then returned to their home countries. Prosecutors don't always know what these people did when they were part of a foreign terrorist group. So they charge the people with supporting a foreign terrorist organization and sentence them to a certain number of years. But then they eventually have to release them back into society. Initially charged with a raft of serious offenses, including conspiracy to kill U.S. nationals, Lint, in 2002, struck a deal reportedly offered by prosecutors in part to prevent details of the apparent mistreatment of Lint at the hand of U.S. forces by his defense, Lind pleaded guilty to fighting alongside the Taliban. At a sentencing hearing in Virginia that year, he sniffled and nearly broke down as he addressed the court in a 14-minute speech. 
Had I realized then what I know now about the Taliban, I would never have joined them, Lind said. I never understood jihad to mean anti-Americanism or terrorism. Well, that's good. At his sentencing, he showed remorse. He showed contrition. When he had signed up to fight for the Taliban, he didn't understand what the Taliban was. But now he understood. We can see from his remorse and contrition that he's no longer a threat. That contrition has been contested by a pair of official reports from the National Counterterrorism Center and the Federal Bureau of Prisons that were first published by Foreign Policy in 2017. According to the NCTC report, as of May 2016, Lind continued to advocate for global jihad and to write and translate violent extremist texts. In March 2016, the report says, he told a television news reporter that he would continue to spread violent extremist Islam upon his release. Lind had made pro-ISIS statements to various reporters, the Bureau of Prisons report also stated. In an email to his father included in the BOP report, Lind said that he was not interested in renouncing my beliefs or issuing condemnations. The two assessments do not provide details for the statements, and the BOP and the NCTC declined to comment to CNN on the reports. On Wednesday, a local NBC news station in Los Angeles released excerpts from correspondence a producer there had with Lind from behind bars, where Lind said in 2015 he thought ISIS was doing a spectacular job. The Islamic State is clearly very sincere and serious about fulfilling the long-neglected religious obligation of establishing a caliphate through armed struggle, which is the only correct method, Lind told the producer, according to the report. Lind denied a request by CNN to be interviewed in prison, and his lawyers declined to comment on the counterterrorism assessments. If I didn't know better, which I don't, I might think that Lind was only pretending to be remorseful at his sentencing. But now I'm confused. I can understand a young convert to Islam misunderstanding the peaceful teachings of his peaceful religion and mistakenly concluding that Islam calls for violence and terror. But when you go to prison, you've got all the time in the world to read and study. Why didn't Lind simply open the Quran and see the endless love for all people? He must have completely avoided the Quran in prison. In prison, Lind was known to be deeply religious. He recited the entire Quran from memory each week and regularly gave a call to prayer for the other Muslims in his unit, according to a narrative written by an inmate who served with him. Lind went by the name Yahya, the inmate wrote in the anonymous essay, which was published by Cage, a group started by someone released without charges after being detained in Guantanamo that advocates for those arrested or prosecuted in the war on terror. The human rights group Amnesty International cut ties with Cage because of some of its statements and relationships with terror suspects. His whole life revolves around reading, writing, praying, and working out in his cell. His Muslim brothers know he is busy, so they don't hesitate to cook for him in order to make sure he eats well, the inmate wrote. Lind discussed his values in his own essay, published by Cage in 2014, and titled Memorizing the Quran, a Practical Guide for Prisoners. Free time is a great gift from Allah, and few people enjoy more of it than prisoners, Lind wrote. The best way we can express our gratitude to Allah for this gift is through the study, recitation, memorization, contemplation, and implementation of his noble book. This guy recites the Quran from memory every week, and he's written a guide for Muslim inmates on how to use their time in prison to memorize the Quran. How do you think he missed all of the peace and tolerance in the Quran? Notice how the other Muslim inmates treated him. They would make his food for him so that he could focus on studying and writing. They treated him like a hero. This is a former member of Al-Qaeda who was praising ISIS. Didn't the other Muslim inmates realize that 
terrorists are fake Muslims who've hijacked their peaceful religion? Why didn't they correct his violent interpretation of the Quran? Why didn't Muslim organizations like CARE and ISNA visit Lint and show him that Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance? Why didn't they go to him and tell him, Brother, the Quran clearly says that if anyone kills a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind, so long as you don't read the entire verse and certainly don't read the very next verse. Why didn't they go to him and say, Wait a minute, the Quran says that there is no compulsion in religion as long as you ignore the doctrine of abrogation. Why didn't they correct him? Could it be that they know that their claims about Islam being peaceful and tolerant don't work on someone who recites the entire book from memory once per week? Now Lint has been released. He's living in Virginia. He'll be closely monitored, but apart from that, he's free. He'll be performing his Salat at a local mosque, where he'll be viewed as a hero. He's planning to take the pilgrimage to Mecca, where he'll really be viewed as a hero. And if you object to his beliefs in any way, your only possible motivation is racism, despite the fact that Lind is almost as white as his prophet. But don't be too worried about Lint, because there's going to be a massive wave of terrorists being released from prison after serving their sentences. What could go wrong?